Okay, back into some of the basic shapes of the painting is what we're going to be looking at. Now, when you're starting to visualize how you're going to be doing the bird, the basic steps, basic shapes of the bird, um, I put in a couple of things that I do want you to keep in mind all the time. Right after the design, you're right after the design here, part of it on page nine, you're going to see contour feathers and feather lengths. That's something that's very important. And so we had a nice picture of her up here, and you'll see the uh, the length of the feathers basically on the bird. The smaller feathers are up here and around the face and the beak, between the face and the beak in this type of area here. And then the feathers will go up and around, contouring to the shape of the head. That is extremely important because that gets flow to the body of the bird here. So that is very, very important. The other thing that's very important is that they stay very small. So I may be using just small taps in here, slightly longer strokes, Longer strokes down through here, longer strokes down through here, so the feathers get larger, especially as you get down to the flight feathers. When you see an area like this where I have black and white and they're overriding each other, and this is the beauty of the heritage and one of the reasons why I use the thick bodied heritage paint. See this white sits right with that black. It does not blend. If you use too thin a paint, it's going to blend in there, but the thick body paint is going to hold that uh, together there. So, uh, that's one reason why we need this nice thick paint. If you get thin, it's just going to bleed out and it's just going to blend and it's going to give you all kinds of problems. And it may not be your technique at all. It's the consistency of your paint, okay? So that keep in mind. But we have all of this contour. So here's a nice little thing that I wrote here about the contouring of the bird. How are you going to think about the contouring, okay? So basically we have here, we're going to be uh, dividing up now here's the basic steps that I put on here starting on page 11 here basic steps before feathering your bird and one of the things you're going to keep in mind in all the time is on your painting here as part of your plan where you're going to put found edges really defined edges of the painting and lost edges edges that recede down and notice that keeps your focal vision right in here onto the bird so that's very important you have to decide here Okay, and then we'll we'll pick out our our brushes, you know, decide our brushes for that, which we just talked about, and then we'll continue down here with some of the basic steps. So the basic steps is to kind of find an undertone for the bird, establish that undertone, establish some shadow, soften the whole thing for the for with your finger, and then you're ready to establish the movement of the feathers and go into uh, some feathering techniques, which I go on to right here. So let's take a look at the bird we're going to paint here with us as we talk about some of the techniques in to the bird. So back to our little chaffinch here. I have my brushes here that I'm going to be putting out here. I'm going to grab a bigger brush. It doesn't make a difference whether you decide to start rendering your bird with a large brush or a small brush. A small brush is a lot of time, but uh, it doesn't really make a difference. Sometimes I'll start right directly into the background, and that's fine too. The thing is about an artist, when you're an artist, you're going to render an image and when you're going to render this image, I want all my paintings to be diff, uh, different. And so I like to breathe life into all of my paintings where I have birds or painting roses or anything like that. And part of that process is to never repeat yourself too many times. In other words, I create this technique and then I'll do variations of these types of techniques all the time so that each painting is a little different. I have this idea and this plan of where I'm going to go with this painting, but then that plan is fluid. It can change. It can go this way. It can go that way. And that's what keeps the paintings interesting and full of life. That's what you need to do, okay? So uh, sometimes you'll see me come in here and start the background here uh, on our bird. Sometimes I'll come in and just render the bird first. Since this is going to be a painting about the bird, this is going to be the detail area that I'm going to want in the bird in here. I'll start up into this area here. Now we'll look at our little chaffinch here and we'll find some of the undertones. Now the undertone is not the darkest shadow tone area that you're going to have. You'll see kind of into here, you'll see kind of her shadow tone. Her actual undertone that we're going to have here is a really kind of a toned yellowy kind of color in here. She'll have lighter yellow tones that'll be up into this area. But since we're turning her, 
were turning her. I know the actual chaffinch, and I've looked at a lot of chaffinch uh, uh, birds. She will have a lot of light area right in here because she'll actually be turned into light. And in here, and this is what helps to look at lots of photos, but in here she'll have a lot of light into the breast area that comes down through here. And you can just see a little bit of it right in here. That actually extends down into her um, down into this area of her body here. So uh, we're going to add some of that. But her basic undertone is going to be somewhere right in here, a real toned kind of a yellow. This will be some of the shadow tone. Now we'll change that as we go out here into her primaries and into her secondary uh, types of flight feathers. We'll go towards brown. This has a lot of light on here. These are This deep brown that's here is normally her. So look at a few photos and stuff of the, have a few photos out. The mantle up here also goes to kind of a brown. So I may change that undertone a little bit uh, from bird to bird sometimes on a bird, like a, a yellow goldfinch, like the, you know, the, the male yellow goldfinch, you may use that same tone for most of the body and then a little bit different on the back, uh, you know, the black areas, okay? So we're gonna find kind of a, a, a nice toned, uh, uh, yellowish kind of color. So let's establish that first. I'm going to pull down some haunts of yellow that's here. Okay. And again, there's all different kinds of techniques that I'll use there. So follow the techniques that I do in each of the lessons. Sometimes I'll start the background. Many times I'll just push color into the background and then start the bird. But I'm going to start an undertone here so you can see that. And then I'll show you you can do the background right after that, okay? So we'll we'll push an undertone here. We're going to take a little bit of Hansa Yellow. And I'm just going to, I'm going to juicy that up with just a bit of extender. So it is a little bit loose so I can just move it around the bird here quite easy. I'm going to tone this down. Now, how do you tone it down? Any kind of brown you could use. You could use the red and black, which is a brown. Okay, the uh, two parts red, one part black. That gives you a beautiful, um, I should see that on camera, where that does that and I'll mix that in and that gives me this beautiful undertone. If I feel it looks a little bit too red, I just increase the black of it here and I'll get that kind of all the way to that kind of greenish undertone that that, um, that works really, really well when you're doing a goldfinch or something like that. So there's some beautiful kind of a greenish undertone beautiful kind of brownish undertone. That burnt sienna makes beautiful tones for this as well. Kind of orangey kind of undertone, nice warm orangey kind of undertone, which is pretty close to what uh, she is. I can cool that right down with a little bit of violet or a little bit of black, and I get a beautiful kind of tone. And that will also make a nice shadow tone down for here for her. So that's a pretty good tone. Use the Hansi Yellow, a little bit of, raw, of the... Uh, um, a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna, maybe a bit of black. The most important thing here is this tone changes throughout the entire body. And one of the questions that I asked, uh, that I answered the other day on uh, Facebook and stuff um, with a very experienced painter, she was like, she was asking me this question, how do you know to make the same color all the time? That's the difference. Starting right now, you will never want to make the same color twice. Then your bird doesn't have interest. Remember that. I go to mixes like this not to create the same color. I go to mixes like this because look at all of this beautiful color in here. All of that works. All of those colors. Look at her right in here. Look at all those beautiful colors. That's all of her right in there. That's what I got to lift all of those out and push those all into that area there. They're all different, okay? They're all different. That's what you want. You want to have that difference and that variations to it. So I paint, I do brush mixing for variation, not to copy the same types of colors or tones that you see, okay? So we want to vary it. So I'm going to come down here. Let's take a little burnt sienna, maybe a little black, a little Hansa. I'll thin this just a bit to get a little bit of a motion here uh, with that. And I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to establish the undertone on her. Sometimes I'll leave it a little lighter where um, I will want the highlights or, you know, we're going to go to a lighter color here in the breast area. I'm going to take this up onto her scapulars a little bit or the, basically, I just call this whole area here the mantle. 
in a lot of the paintings. I just call the whole area just for simplicity, the mantle. This front part up here, those calls are her scapulars and then her coverts right up through here. We'll put a little bit of that down through there. We might even streak a little bit just like this just to get some of that tone into her flight feathers. Maybe a touch of it down into her tail there. So she has a real, a real yellowish undertone here. We'll put some of that tone. Notice I just changed it a little bit. I just moved up here, changed it a little bit. That's okay. It's all going to look pretty much the same. See how it's just changing a little bit. We'll put some of this undertone right into her, right into her head here, right into this area, right up by the eye. Sometimes I leave a little white by the eye ring. That's the part that goes around the eye. Sometimes I leave that, but notice how very sketchy. I'm just looking for a tone here. Let's just go down the mantle here with this too. Let's put that on her. Just get some of that tone. This is her nice undertone that we have here. Now we'll come in and we'll find some shadow tone. Now sometimes, again, I'll, I'll change a little bit of the technique. I'm just going to darken this down with a little red, a little black. We'll find a nice shadowy tone here. Um, somewhere right around in here. That's kind of pretty. If you want it a little warmer, more orange or so, you can add a little more burnt sienna, which I'm going to want just a touch into that. She's pretty warm, so a little bit of burnt sienna into that will help keep her warm here. And that's pretty nice. And I'll look for where I'm going to be applying some of this, uh, maybe on the tail covert here, at the end of the, uh, the tail here. Underneath the wing, we'll have some right in there, right up underneath there. That'll be a nice shadowy tone. And I'm just establishing some movement here. See, I'm just sliding the brush. That can, slide, that can establish some movement. And you'll want that sliding of the brush to kind of follow the contours of her body. Okay. Now, one of the things I do, though, is I make sure that some of that stays soft. So I'll slide my finger around because I don't want so much movement right now that it's going to interfere with the feathering that I'm going to decide to do. But I'll put a little bit of the shadow tone like right in here that's going to be on her cheek. We'll put some right in there. And, you know, you can, you're can you following all different kinds of birds, but she'll have a, a, a little bit of shadow tone pulling this way. Now, notice I'm just going to pull this in like this. And I'm going to, my brush is actually moving smaller and shorter here because I'm up around the face and I'm using, even though these aren't the feathers, I'm still using some contouring strokes and my, and the length of the stroke. So here they're shorter. Here you saw me just doing big long body strokes here. Okay. Here I'm doing shorter and I'll get a little longer following the contour of that, uh, you know, of her head here. We'll put some ideas of some of that were the, the nap of the, the of her neck there is right over the mantle here. We'll streak some down. This will just give me some nice ideas, streaking, kind of curving, following her body shape. Some curves up like this. That'll work. Maybe a few strokes down like this. That'll have the contours of these feathers here. Um, a little bit of this dark right up in here, up and around, which will be her beak. But see, I'm using just, I'll use just a corner of the brush and a quick little tap there because that's what's happening here. And just this starts the initial movement of it. Let's also use this dark tone here. And let's just establish with some of the dark, just the beginning of, here's a, a covert. Let's go a little darker, even uh, like a burnt sienna here. And a little bit of black is nice here. Let's try that. And these will establish, um, like here, these are these are the media coverts. These are her, her top coverts right here, her greater coverts here, or just the larger ones. And I'm just going to pull these down. I'll try to leave. She has little white tips on her wings, which you're going to see right into here. And the white tips on the coverts right there. So we're just going to establish a little dark right now, right in this area, pulling this down. And like I say, you can, you know, go find yourself some nice photos and copy them as well. This will be the folded up tarsal feathers, or we just call them flight feathers. In the book, I'll just call them flight feathers for ease. And another set right down here. How, how real are you going to render that? You're going to do all the specific flight feathers, or are you going to uh, just generally come in here and use the chisel of your brush like this to just suggest some of this dark here? the movement of the dark there. That's up to you. But the chisel, this one, I love this little fusion because the chisel is not too perfect, but it gives you a lovely movement of color and a lovely uh, 
feel of the bird there without giving too much, making it too perfect. Then we'll come down and we'll take some of that dark, which is a little bit darker than our shadow tone, and we'll just put in some of this, uh, the movement of her tail feathers, and they kind of V down here at the end here. There's two sets here, a couple of sets, and some coverts that cover it here and the tail covert there, but we don't have to worry too much about that, but you might want to take some of that dark and just get a little bit of that body shadow in there, and a little bit of that dark into a few other areas. And notice, notice the direction and the flat of the brush that I'm using, and I'm not feathering, but it's starting to look like feathers. And if I decide to add any of that up here, I'll use a smaller little touch of that. And again, follow the contours of the face coming around like that. And that just kind of sets sets uh, her up there a little bit. So she's going to take some of this dark because it also is going to go out here onto the tip of the beak. So I'll just use the chisel here. And I'll put a little bit of that out on the tip of the beak here. We'll get into some more beak detailing and stuff like that in just a little bit. But that'll set... Um, That'll set these basic uh, shapes up. Now what I want to do is just take a few seconds here and we'll talk about some of the other elements.